peace be to you. This is Omar Abdul Malik, physician assistant and health educator. Uh, I just got off from work, so I thought I'd do a short vlog, and um, I wanted to talk about the March for Our Lives, um, the March Against Gun Violence. Uh, I saw a lot of the the um, walkers and um, I guess you could say protesters and speech givers on my way to work here, and I. Caught some of it on the news um, whilst um, here at work, and I was wondering, you know, after all of the speeches and after all of the the chants and slogans and sign carrying, is it going to result in the implication or the, the formulation and implication of new policies? You know, a lot of these policies, um, many different individuals and groups are going to find distasteful. Some people will be claiming victory. Others will be claiming uh, defeat when whatever policies are going to be um, created by whatever um, legislative bodies. Uh, I, I kind of take this personally because um, part of my profession as a physician assistant is to treat people who have been injured. And in doing so, I've, I've treated a lot of people who are victims of gun violence. Now, there are different implications from, from uh, students and children being shot with automatic guns, um, as we saw you know, with the um, horrific incident um, at the high school. And then last year's incidents at, uh, at the nightclub and then, of course, the, uh, the Nevada shooting. Um, I said this in prior videos that these incidences are going to seem to um, occur on a relatively reg regular basis. Uh, the people that I've treated here in D.C. are usually victims of handgun violence. And the implications are, there's implications of race and um, socioeconomic level and, and uh, uh, life decisions based on one's acculturation. You know, these are unfortunate. These are things that people don't. It makes for very unfortunate, uh, uncomfortable conversation. But it's the stuff of um, social and political debate that I don't want to get into. Um, one of the things I did as a physician assistant is um, I did my medical training at the now defunct DC General Hospital back in the late 90s. I saw a lot of guys getting shot, and, and you know, guys that had shot other people, and. Um, you know, I would ask them, you know, I asked one of them, like, what are you guys doing out there? He said, man, there's a war going on, Doc. I'm out here banging, doing my thing. And I'm like, you guys don't own one brick of Southeast Anacostia. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I've said this before. You know, but the implications are different when somebody who, you know, from all reports um, reported in the news is that they've got mental health issues. And it, it's a kind of touchy subject because you start to want to place blame. You know, was it, was it the person's fault? You know, or did they have mental health issues? Was it the clinician's fault for not reporting the mental health issues? Is it the, the gun, you know, where do you get the gun from? Is it the, the gun seller's fault, the gun manufacturer's fault? You know, there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of yelling. Um, you know, these things make me personally uncomfortable. I, I'm not, uh, I try not to be an argumentative person, but um, I, I can only affect change within the scope of, of my practice and um, my immediate um, community. And I wonder as a physician assistant, have I done enough to, to stop gun violence? You know, I've had patients tell me that they feel like killing somebody. I don't know if they have a gun. You know, or an automatic uh, weapon, <laughs> no less. Is it my responsibility to report this person to the police and say, look, that guy said he wanted to kill somebody. And I know the person's got a, a um, history of mental health disorders. Can you arrest somebody for homicidal ideation? You know, back, you know, many years ago, they had something, called, it was like a paddy wagon where they would, uh, you know, these were these guys in white coats that would go around gathering up, um, you know, crazy people, quote unquote. That's what they called them back then, and they would take them to 
the proverbial loony bin and put them in straight jackets. We know we don't have the right to do that to people. And, you know, people have got people with mental health issues are already, they already are stigmatized for having self, mental health issues. You know, do clinicians have the right to report these people? And then do the authorities have the right to come take these people away? You know, under the onus of, of protecting the public from, you know, a potential horrific disaster like what, what's been happening, you know, this year and, and uh, last year and the year before that. I, I don't know. It's a very touchy subject because you're talking about ethics and people's rights. Um, people have the right to, to live, you know, the right to, to um, happiness, the pursuit of happiness. It's one of our inalienable rights. Um, you know, and, and I think that's what these protests are about, you know, people's right to be safe, to go to school. I, I dropped, um, I dropped my, my children off at, um, at school one day, um, and they were going to um, different activities in D.C. public schools. They had to go through metal detectors, you know, and I went with them. I was emptying out my pockets, you know, putting my bag through an x-ray scanner, you know, taking my shoes off, you know, taking off my belt, you, you get the wand, you know, putting my arms out. and. You know, there are these big security guards there with, with guns. I'm like, wow, man, this is, my kids are going into a school. You know, it's like I'm going to an airport. But this is what it's come to. And, and you know, in, in Washington, D.C., we have very restrictive gun laws. Yet, we have one of the highest rates of homicide in the country, you know, given, you know, with respect to our relatively small population. You know, the restrictive gun laws and the, the, um, the uh, x-ray scanners and, and um, metal detectors, you know, that, that's in all of the federal buildings and the schools. That hasn't really, I don't know that that's done a whole lot to, um, to curb gun violence. You know, especially here in, in um, D.C. where I work, uh, I, I, I'm treating people who have been shot. You know, we call them status post MSGW, multiple you know, status post multiple gunshot wound. I um, mean, it's really, it's really uh, tragic. But um, again, that, that's, that's, uh, that's different from, from um, people being shot with uh, automatic weapons. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't think there's any easy answers and that's, that's why I, I tend to be um, uh, maybe somewhat rambling in my speech. I don't think there's anything definitive that, that can be done. Um, I don't know if taking away people's guns, you know, broadly is the answer. I don't know if locking up so-called crazy people is the answer. You know, we have, uh, I work near um, St. Elizabeth's Hospital and um, they let a lot of people out many years ago under the auspices of, of um, respecting the people's right to be free. You know, you can't institutionalize people anymore. You know, it, it takes a lot to, to do that. You know, so, certainly not to the degree that we were able to do. But um, I, I'm going to pose this question and then I'll end the video. What do you all think um, clinicians can do and what's the responsibility of, of uh, clinicians like, like uh, doctors and physician assistants and nurse practitioners with respect to curbing the gun violence? Um, for example, do we need to report these things to the police? Um, do we use our prescriptive writing authority to, to um, write prescriptions such that the person can be lulled into a uh, kind of, um, I don't know, a doldrum to where they're, they're almost uh, brain dead or high, you know, so they can't go out. They don't have the energy to go out and, uh, and hurt anybody. But again, question to you, the, the uh, YouTubers, our YouTube viewing public, what do you think clinicians can do or should do to uh, try to curb the, the uh, violence from um, guns? Take care. Peace. Oh, and yes, <laughs> please be respectful in your, in your answers. Try not to use any profanity or uh, attack me or attack each other. Peace.